Welcome back to my sustainability journey. My name is Craig and I am on a mission to live a more sustainable urban life. Whether that is through growing a lot of my own food in an urban landscape or an urban vegetable garden, or making things from scratch, such as homemade mustard, homemade hummus, and the delicious homemade yogurt. All of these things are so simple to make. It just requires a little bit of effort and a little bit of time. And today, we are going to make one of my favorite condiments, and that is mayo. I absolutely love mayo. It can be used in so many dishes, but what's in it really freaks me out. There are so many ingredients. When you look at making it yourself, we have four or five ingredients. That's it. And yes, if you make it yourself, it expires. <laughs> and it expires pretty quickly in comparison to store-bought things which have so many emulsifiers, modifiers, improvers, enhancers, stabilizers, all of those things when you can just use nature and not overdo it. So jumping straight into it, what are you going to need? First of all, probably the most important thing is an egg and the whole egg. Don't go buy many of the other recipes that require you to split the egg and only use the, the whites. Then we need oil. And what type of oil you need is going to very much determine the health benefit of your, your mayo. So off the bat, you can use olive oil, but I would suggest you don't for two reasons. Firstly, is it's going to be a damn expensive mayo because you need a lot just to make a little bit more than a cup's worth of mayo, you need a cup of oil. And if you're using olive oil, it's going to be expensive. Second of all is olive oil is flavored, not artificially flavored, naturally flavored. But with a homemade mayo or any mayo for that sake, you don't want a flavored oil because you want to control the flavors through things you're going to be putting in. And that's why you will almost always find seed oils. Now, if you are on any form of health journey, you are health conscious, you will know that seed oils are not really good for you. They are actually the opposite. They increase cholesterol, they increase inflammation. There are so many things that seed oils do to your body that's not good. But there is a silver lining. And one of the seed oils that is very seldom spoken about is sunflower oil. Now, sunflower oil is one of the oils that actually carry health benefits as opposed to are just detrimental to your health. There's a lot of nutrients that carry through from sunflower oil, especially if consumed raw. But the same applies to everything in life. Moderation. If you're going to be drinking cups of sunflower oil, yeah, well, you're probably going to end up with heart problems and many other health-related issues. But sunflower oil doesn't carry a lot of the bad things that canola, ra rapeseed oil, all these other seed-based oils do. So what you can do is get rid of the, the more common and cheaper alternatives of oils, seed oils, and use sunflower oil. Then you're going to need a good old lemon. Then there are some variations here. You can use mustard. And if you haven't watched the video, I will tag it for you where I made this mustard using two ingredients. Yes, two. It's that simple. <laughs> and it all depends on your flavor profiles, what you like, what you don't like. My kids don't really like the flavor of mustard in the mayo, so I tend to leave it off. But for this recipe, we will use it. Then what you also need is vinegar and some salt. Just a little pinch of salt, not too much. And for your vinegar, you're also going to use a very little amount, exactly a tablespoon. And on the vinegar, it can be any vinegar. I'm going to use apple cider vinegar. I've used white wine vinegar before. I haven't used brown, brown vinegar before, but the same concept would apply. And then ultimately, you smash it all together. But you need to smash it together in a certain sequence. And that we are going to do next. So starting at the very beginning, what you're going to need is... A container to blend it in. This is a very, very well used Nutribullet <laughs> cup. You can see it has been very well used. 
then you're going to need your cup and then quite importantly for your oil is you're going to need something to pour it this does not pour well and all we are going to need in addition to that is this one calls for a handheld blender but you can use a food processor as well i just like how small and compact these are so all you're going to do is you're going to take your egg crack it drop it in and please don't skip this step it's pretty important you're going to now blend the egg for a couple of seconds just to get it all well mixed up and then what we're going to do is we are going to measure out a cup of oil and this is where making mayo becomes a little bit of an art if you add the oil too quickly the mixture is going to split now what i do is i have it in a low low spin so that's high that's low and i keep holding it and keep the blade spinning and little by little i'm going to keep adding more and more until i can see the mixture starting to thicken up and ultimately turn into mayo i'm going to show you how it works and what it looks like Now you'll see it very, very quickly turns into a thick consistency and you are at the beginning stage of having mayo. At this point, you want to very much up the tempo. So you need to switch from a low speed up to a much higher speed, just so that you don't put your, your utensils under too much strain. Too much strain. And that's all of the oil in. You can already see it's a thick, thick consistency. And what I want to emphasize with this is I'm showing you raw, rough, basic. Because I am not a professional chef. You are not a professional chef. We are not cooking experts. And the reality is, this is probably how you're going to be doing it. So it's going to be rough, not look good, but it's going to taste damn good. Okay, so now that we have basically a mayo, there you can see we have a mayo. We now need to, step one is flavor it. Step two is preserve it. Now the preserving part of it is the vinegar. And yeah, you don't need too much. You just need a tablespoon. I'm gonna pop in a tablespoon. It's also gonna give it that zinginess that we know of mayo. But most importantly, the zinginess is going to be coming from your lemon. Lemon. So just give it a good squeeze. We like tangy mayo, uh, tangy mayo, so a good squeeze of lemon. If you don't, if you love neutral flavored, very much light, light flavored mayo, then you don't need to add too much lemon. Let's get these liquids mixed in. At this point, you can already start tasting. That already tastes really good. Now I need to add in a good pinch of salt, just for some flavoring. And then I'm going to add in some mustard. But I, and you can see, I'm just adding in pretty much a teaspoon's worth, not too much. And if you are adding in mustard, you can expect the color to change, but the flavor flavors was certainly still gonna be there. One more for taste. That's pretty much perfect. And there you go. Homemade mayo, as simple as that. The final step in the process is to jar it up. This is where you're really gonna see how good this looks. Then you have a very cute, beautiful jar of mayo. Pop this in the fridge and it would last you a week up to two weeks. But that is how simple it is 
to make your own mayo at home. Now that you know how to make your own homemade mayo in what is probably less than three or four minutes, you really have no excuse to go and buy your own again. This way, you are feeding yourself and your family cleaner food. It is cheaper and you've learned a skill that you otherwise didn't. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you feel more inspired to take on the journey of making your own food from scratch and starting with condiments because they are just so easy and quick to make. If you want to support this channel, please subscribe. Please buy me a coffee in the link below. And most importantly, just take what I've shared and put it into practice. Refine for what works for you and just enjoy the journey you are on. Until next time, happy homesteading.